Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health, and today I am joined by Greg in Portland, Oregon, who has agreed to talk with us and share his story um, with his hip pain. Um, he is a uh, Thai boxer, and uh, he likes to use his hips pretty aggressively. And uh, a couple of years ago, he started having uh, symptoms that uh, look like FAI, and he got a diagnosis, and he ended up becoming an FAI fixer using the FAI Fix program. So he's going to talk with us today about his story and uh, share the ups and downs and the realities of his recovery. So, Greg, thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, you you are welcome. Uh, reading your story in in email was awesome. It was really inspiring to read how how far you got yourself. So, can you uh, give us a little bit of background on what happened with your hips, where you started from, and and what happened that got you eventually to the FAI fix? Yeah, um, well, like you said, I I do uh, Thai boxing and. Um doing it for probably two to two to three years before I started like noticing uh, any pain. Um, and yeah, it just started, it kind of just started happening when I would, you know, when I would kick, it's obviously like it's kind of an extreme range of motion and there's a lot of like impact going on and, and rotation. And um, so I think just over time that probably like maybe I wasn't as flexible or as, or as strong in certain areas as I needed to be. Um, so, and I was still forcing that range. So I think over time that just kind of deteriorated, deteriorated the situation. Uh, started noticing pain. I don't even, I forgot how long ago it was now. Um, what did I say in the, in the thing? It was like four years ago now about. I believe it was four, 2012. You know? I think you, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It was before I went to Thailand. Um, or maybe when I got back from Thailand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I think in your email you said spring of 2012 uh, yeah, after a trip right. to Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and the pain, the pain just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point where it started waking me up when I was sleeping and I just couldn't, I couldn't sit like even just sitting here how I am right now. It's like from even just a couple of years ago, it's like night and day. I wouldn't have been able to do this. I would have had to shift. I would have been shifting. I would have had to stand up and stretch. Um, and yeah, now obviously I can sit, I can I can do anything I want, so it's pretty it's pretty sweet. That's spectacular. That's spectacular. It's a really common problem for people who get the FAI diagnosis um, to just not be able to sit. It's super common. Um, so to clarify, um, what's what happened when you went to the doctor um, to investigate all your hip pain and discomfort? Yeah. Um, well, I went and the the doctor first. Uh, referred me for an x-ray and then that showed um fai or showed some type the cam type fai basically um and then they had me go in for an mri to check the labrum uh and the, M the mri revealed some pretty like, nasty results but from what i've seen on your guys channel it's like what i heard is pretty common um with paralabral cyst labral tear had cam type fai i think with mine that was different um was it he it said something about a stress reaction um, so I think that there was maybe potentially concern about a stress fracture in the pelvis happening. Hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so, and then, so I got that result and then they referred me, he referred me to an orthopedic surgeon who, uh, basically told me I would need surgery. He then referred me to a different orthopedic surgeon because I told him I wanted a second opinion, mm -hmm. uh, and got the same, the same feedback from him. So. So both surgeons just said it's, it's time to cut. Was it, was it both hips or was it just one hip? Um, well, it was the left, but I don't, and I don't remember. I just remember the the doctor saying that the right hip also had FAI, mm -hmm. and that it was only a matter of time until I would feel pain in that one. Okay. I don't know how much time he's talking about because I don't have any pain in that hip yet. So, <laughs> well, let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after, after you met with the surgeons, did you do anything to try to, to fix the problems? Did you do other things, uh, before you ended up at the FAI fix? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I did, well, I did a lot of research. I actually kind of stumbled on the FAI fix when I got those results and talked to the surgeons, mm -hmm. uh, cause I was just was researching anything I could about FAI and, and labral tears and stuff. Um, and so I think it was actually your guys' videos, if I remember correctly, that kind of led me to question the surgeon and say, Hey, can I, can I pursue physical therapy? Can I pursue some other non-invasive uh, means of correcting this before jumping into it? 
And uh, he was like, yeah, he basically was like, yeah, you can try it. He didn't seem to think that it was going to work. Gotcha. Um, so I did about 12 weeks of physical therapy. I stopped doing uh, Muay Thai entirely, more or less. I mean, I was just teaching a couple days a week, and I was basically just trying to not stress my hip at all. Um, so, yeah, I did that for about 12 weeks before I decided to go uh, go for it and, and take the plunge and get the FBI fix. Um, okay, so um, clearly now things are a bit better. W- were there any reasons that you were hesitant to – um, do what we were talking about in the FAI fix. Was there anything about it that had you doubtful? Um, no, it was kind of my own personal, uh, hangups. I think, um, I'm kind of like hesitant of any of like the model of like, okay, pay us money online and we'll like fix your problems sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, upon more research and also just like seeing your guys' story, you, you and Shane's story about like what you went through it was pretty clear that it was like, you're not going to fix our problem. You're going to show us how to fix our problems. Right. Yeah. I, that's a great distinction, right? We, we can't, we can't do it for you. We can just show you here's, here's tools. Here are ways to think about it. Here are ways to work with it. And you do the work, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, so what was your overall experience like? What's, what are your hips like now? Um, overall experience, super positive. Um, my hips are way more mobile than they ever have been before. Um, I, I have way less pain. Um, I, I would say that I'm not like 100% there. I mean, for kicking, obviously, it's a little bit extreme range of motion, especially if you're trying to pick up somebody's head. Um, so I don't, I don't have that kind of like – I mean, I can kind of get my leg up there by like just throwing it, but my, my um, kind of control at those ranges isn't quite there. And when I try to like push it, I get a little pain sometimes when I'm kicking, but – really like it's night and day i can go and train and basically have very little warm-up uh and 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 get through a workout without any pain whereas before it was like any time i swung my hip laterally at all i would have like shooting pain to my hip so uh how many days a week are you training now uh anywhere from i mean i just had a i just had a fight um on was it april 23rd so like when i'm leading up to that i'm training like five or six days a week um so, yeah, I mean, anywhere from, like, three to six days a week. Man, so where can we see you fight? Can we see this online? Can we see this in person somewhere? Where is this going on? <laughs> There's actually a video of uh, one of my fights from last year on YouTube that somebody posted on there. So Okay. Yeah. If we can get yeah. that link, uh, we'll, we'll definitely provide that in the description uh, on this video so people can check that out. That'll be awesome. Um so uh, let's see. You'd also mentioned sitting used to be really painful. So now that's not a problem. Looks like. Yeah, not not really. Yeah, that was the other thing too. A lot of times I would train and not have like a ton of pain, or I would have pain initially when I would start kicking, and then kind of like I don't know what happened. My body would just get like numb to it, and I would just train through it and be fine. And then after I'd come home and I'd sit down and just be aching and shifting and a lot of pain. And now it's basically basically gone. So pretty sweet. That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Um, so, you know, given your experience so far with, you know, with, you know, the, the surgical opinions, given your experience with your own hip pain and coming out of that, um, you know, are there, you know, what would you say to somebody who is in a similar situation? Maybe not necessarily a Thai, you know, my Thai boxer, but somebody, you know, who's got the hip pain, somebody who's suffering with that hip pain and being told they have FAI and need surgery. Is there advice that you would give them? What kind of insight can you give them? Yeah, I would say explore every option and don't just don't just research it. I mean, once you get surgery, you there's no going back from that. So don't just research it and, and decide, oh hey, I don't yeah, I don't know. Some people said that that didn't work for them. So I'm just gonna get the surgery. It's put the time into it. I mean, I put twelve weeks in the physical therapy, I saw some improvement, and then I thought, you know what? maybe maybe the physical therapy isn't a focused enough approach on this specific problem. So that's why I, why I decided to get the FAI fix. Um, and I'm really glad I did because if I got surgery, who knows? I mean, it could you hear different stories. Sometimes it, it sounds like it works and it helps, but then, you know, you can be that percentage that doesn't work. And then what do you do? Then you just have this surgery, this invasive procedure done, and you're, nothing's changed. Right, right. So. Um, uh, you brought up an interesting point. So you put in that work. So... Um, can you give an idea of like what kind of time you were putting in personally? So you're somebody who who your training schedule can be pretty intense. It sounds like 
um, as you were um, trying to get out of that really painful state, you know, how much time were you dedicating to it? What did your training schedule look like? What were you doing that was really helping you? Yeah, when I was when I was really on it, I would say I was doing about 30 minutes a day, um, almost every day. Uh, and then like, you know, depending on what I have going on, if I, you know, if I'm training a lot and it's just also on top of that, having work and stuff, if I'm having trouble fitting the time in, I would say, all right, every other day I'm going to do 30, 30 minutes to an hour and just like stick to that no matter what, no matter how tired it was in the evening or try to get it done in the morning. Right. Uh, so yeah, I would say about 30 minutes a day or, you know, or every other day. Cool. Uh, did you find any exercises that were particularly helpful for you? For anybody out there who's like kicking and doing martial arts, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I spent a lot of time. I mean, the lacrosse ball is like my best friend now. Um, I spent a lot of time just rolling around in the on the glute meat and, and trying to get that in the PFL. And, um, and then the other one that I actually found really helpful, which I don't really do anymore, so I don't know. Maybe I should start doing it again. <laughs> uh, was the fire hydrant? Um, uh, not stretch, but fire hydrant uh, tissue work with the lacrosse ball on the adductors. I felt like that would really, I would, there would be a noticeable change where I'd try to swing my hip laterally and it just barely swing out and I'd have pain on the lateral portion of my hip. And then I'd do that and my hip would, the range of motion would increase drastically. So, uh, so for people who are watching this view, to clarify, he's actually pointing out that the inner thigh, you're saying the inner thigh, right, was so tight. That when yeah. you kick the leg out to the side, then the outside edge of the hip would hurt. So then okay. doing the massage work to the inside of the hip actually made the outside feel a lot better. That, is that yeah. correct? Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that, that's a great illustration of where, you know, chasing after the site of pain can end up leaving you nowhere. And in fact, you need to start searching somewhere else, search on the other side to really make that change. That's, that's a huge, huge example. Thanks for sharing that one. Uh, so, um, you know, we've, we've covered all, you know, your, your story from beginning to end. Do you have anything, anything that you want to add? Do you have any fights coming up? Is there anything we, <laughs> we should, <laughs> anything we uh, should know? <laughs> yeah, well, I do have fights coming up, but I actually want to piggyback on what you were just saying about, uh, not necessarily chasing the area where the pain is. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that was my, my main issue with physical therapy was, they were just chased, they were, it was so focused on just the hip. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was some stuff with the glute where they were trying to do stable, like stabilizer stuff, where I do like single leg uh, deadlifts without a weight and just try to be controlled, which I thought those were useful. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of it was just pinpoint down, okay, where's the pain? Let's address that. And I don't think that they had that full approach to, like, like we were just talking about, like the inner thigh was loosening up the inner thigh, relieved pain on the outer side of my hip, so. Yeah, so they just kind of got too focused on that site. That's it's a really common, really common issue. Yeah. So, but yeah, okay. So shameless plug. Um, I'm gonna be competing uh for uh promotion up in uh, Washington for it's a WBC uh amateur like tournament. And that's at the end of May. It's May 26th, 27th, 28th. Okay. So that's kind of cool. And then real quick, so. Portland Thai Boxing, pdxmuaythai.com. That's my gym where I train at. Cool. Some of the, some of the best guys uh, in the area train and, and compete out of there. And we've got classes for everybody, self-defense, fitness, uh, and competition. So Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll put the link to, uh, to your website in the description as well. Good shameless plug. I like it. And <laughs> really appreciate you taking the time to share the story. And, you know, hopefully other, other guys out there who are into martial arts, other gals out there in the martial arts, you know, when the hip pain starts, you have at least this perspective from somebody who's been there, done that, and really gotten his his hips opened up and way more comfortable. That's huge. It it's it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work, but you're proof again that if you do it, you put in that time, put in the work, good things happen. Um, anything else to add, Greg? Were we all good? I think that's it. Yeah, thank you so much for, for creating the FBI Fix and, and for all the free content you guys are posting. I, I still watch your videos all the time. Anytime I see a new video from Upright Health or Got Rom or, or, or uh, Strength Side or any of that stuff, I'm always like, all right, I got to check that out. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep making videos, man. If you keep watching, we'll keep making them. 
Uh, so we're going to wrap up this video. Everybody who's out there watching, we hope you uh, enjoyed this video. We hope it gives you a really good perspective on things that go on with the hips. Um, hopefully you get a chance if you're in the area to see Greg uh, fight live. Uh, we'll have the, the link in the description. And uh, last thing is that we hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>